Okay, everybody, welcome to another tutorial. Thank you for subscribing. I want to get that out of the way. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's make a loot box. Let's make a custom loot box. Look at this loot box. It's got some particles hanging around it. It says loot on it. I mean, you can't go wrong. If it says loot, it's got to be loot. Let's open it up. Bam. There's all of our loot. Collect it up and shoot some guys. Pow, they're all gone. All right. So let's make that loot box. Okay, so we are inside of Blender. Blender is a 3D program. If you've never used it, go get it. Figure it out. Use it. You could use UAFN, obviously, to do all your modeling, but obviously Blender is far superior in many ways. So I've got two cubes here and some text. And I'm not going to... If you want me to do a tutorial on how I made this box, let me know. But otherwise, I'm just going to lay it out as to what it is. So we've got two cubes here that are made into a box. The bottom one here that we can see, if we bring this up, this is actually the lid, as you can see there. And I've done some text that I embedded inside of this object there. But the lid is the most important part because it's the part that moves. And we have to remember that all of our... Let's just control Z is back. Okay, so all of our objects that come into UEFN are going to have a pivot point of way down here at zero, zero, zero. So even though this doesn't look like a box here inside of Blender, when we bring it in UEFN, because we only want the lid to move, the lid is a separate object and it has to have its origin point down where it's going to hinge, right? Because if we think about it, we want this to rotate on this axis. When we bring it into UEFN, it has to be kind of down here. So keep that in mind. It doesn't matter where your origin point is in, in Blender. It just matters on when you export it. So when we do that, we're going to export this as an FBX file. So we go File, Export, FBX, put it anywhere you want. But, you know, you can get rid of the bake animation. And we want to, we go into Geometry, and we want Smoothing, Set to Face, and then just hit Export. And that will give you an FBX file that we can use inside of Fortnite. All right, so now we're inside of UEFN and I've got my loot box sitting right here where it was in the game, obviously. And we've got a selection of items that make a loot box. So let's take a look inside of my loot box folder here. So always keep your projects as organized as you can. Makes it easier to make tutorials for one and two, uh, mess with your game. So uh, let's go ahead and just hide the button because it's going to overshadow everything. So there's a button in here, so you know. So we've got our box in here. We've got our lid in here. Those are two separate objects. We've got an item granter. This is the thing that is going to grant all the items when you open up the box. And then I've got my effects spawner, visual effects spawner. And inside of there is a custom Niagara emitter system. That's what makes all the little particles. And you can make those anything you want. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's take a look down inside of our content browser. And we can see I've got my blueprints. So the loot box and the loot box lid are both a blueprint item. Very, very easy to make. Right click and then choose blueprint class and then hit building prop. And when you do that, it'll make a new blueprint. So that's fine. We'll leave that. Actually, we'll go ahead and make it. We'll just should have named it something with new blueprint. So we'll open this up and this opens up our blueprint panel. Go to static mesh component, head over to here and search for loot box. And that's it. Save it. So that's what makes a loot box box. And then we do the same thing for the lid. So those are done. That's it. And then you just drag them out onto the screen. Just like that. And then the next thing that we need is an effects. We need a Niagara effect. So to make a Niagara effect, you just go Niagara system. And then it'll ask you, do you want to make a system from selected emitters or a new one or copy one or create a totally empty one? You can create a new one, go to next. And then inside of here will be some stuff that you could, you could do. So you can do an omnidirectional burst, and you can do hanging particulates, fountain, whatever you want. And then I'm not gonna make this a Niagara tutorial, but that's how you would make a Niagara effect. And so that's what this one is. This is just an emitter system and it uh, looks like that. Very, very basic is hanging particulates and I just added a little bit of Z wind. So close that up. Okay, so that is our Niagara system. The item grantor is pretty simple. And essentially, I've just added in a rocket launcher, rockets, sploosh, and, uh, and slap slash. So to set up the item grantor, we want to keep all of the items that we have. Obviously, we don't want to clear the inventory or clear items or clear resources. Just select keep all. And then we're going to grant all the items and not just the current item because we want the 
the chest to completely empty out. And we'll enable it on game start. So receiving player should be triggering player. And then down in drop items at player location, we're going to set that to always instead of never or if inventory full. Because we want the chest to essentially just drop everything out rather than it do anything otherwise. And then the ownership of dropped items should be set to all so that anybody could pick them up rather than just the player. And then we want to play the audio and we don't want to grant on game start. So make sure that is unchecked. And that's your item grantor setup. And then the last item is the button. So the button is going to sit inside of the loot box because we want it to affect the loot box all the way around uh, rather than just in front. And so for there, we want to set the interact time to zero. If you want it to be a longer loot box, you can set this one or two or something like that. Activating team can be any. And then our interaction text is going to be open loot box or open chest or whatever you want to say. Get your stuff. I don't know. Trigger the sound when that happens. We want to allow any class if that's your game. You can set times can trigger to one, but we're actually going to control this in verse. Uh, so we don't have to do that. And then the final thing that we need to do is set an interaction radius to one. So this allows, if you make this bigger, you can see it, it makes a bigger or smaller ball around it so that when somebody shows up to the loot box, they don't have to be right up next to it and they're not going to be too far away. So generally, I just set this to one. And the very, very, very last thing to do is make sure that it's invisible during the game. So uncheck that box there. And that's it for the whole loot box setup. Let's go into Verse and figure out how we make this thing work. All right, inside of Verse now, we have a game manager. And if you don't know how to create a game manager, I've got a whole tutorial on that. So I'll link that below as usual. And we have three editables. So we've got a loot box button, a loot box lid, because that's the only thing we need to affect, and a loot grantor. And if you want the VFX spawner, then you get a fourth. You don't have to have this, though. But uh, the other three are required. <laughs> you definitely need those. So those are all editables. Now, I will kind of preface this in saying that this is the most basic way to make a loot box. You definitely want to be able to package this up in some kind of class, but I'm not going to cover that because it's a little bit more of an advanced topic. OK, so with those editables done, let's go to the on begin. And we're going to set up the loot box button interacted with event event. We're going to subscribe to that and call a function called on loot box button. And that's here. <laughs> it's right right here. That will pass in the agent that hit the button. And so we're going to spawn another function. And spawning a function means that we can make something happen and have some kind of delay. Because essentially we want we want the lid to kind of come upwards at a particular speed, whatever speed we want. We actually get to set that up inside of verse. And we can also do other things like play a sound or, you know, have some other thing happen. Maybe when you open up the box, there's a, a boss that jumps out from behind a rock or something. Who knows? Doesn't matter. But we're going to run that inside of another function called rotate box lid passing in the agent. And that's here. <laughs> it's right right in the next line. First thing we want to do is, is disable the button. If you remember back when I said you could set uh, how many times you want that button to trigger, you can set it to one or we'll do it inside of verse. We're going to do that inside of verse. I think it's a better option. So the next thing we want to do is have a loop running. And this loop is actually breakoutable because we don't want the lid rotating around and around and around. We just want it to go about 90 or so. To do that, we're going to grab the transform of the loop box lid. That's why we made it a blueprint, because it is a creative prop, as we saw in the editable. And then we're going to grab the rotation, and then we're going to move the rotation one degree uh, every 0.5 of a tick kind of thing. And this this is this speed can be changed or the amount that it moves can be changed. So going upwards like this is in a negative direction. Downwards is in a positive direction. So that's why we're applying the local rotation Y because it's on the Y axis. And we know this because if we go into the game, we can see that the little gizmo, the green one is pointing this way uh, on the object locally. You can see that. And the blue one is up and down, which is Z and red one is X. OK, so we apply that rotation and then we're going to grab the new rotation that it got to and say, hey, what is the yaw pitch roll degrees value of this object? And if the Y, which is in the first position, because you get back an array, if the Y is minus 90 or more, then break out. So break and then grant the items and disable the VFX because that's when we'd want to disable the VFX. Once the box is open, the particles disappear and the, um, the loot is granted. And that's it. You're done. That's how you make a very basic loot box inside of UAFN with Verse and Blender. So hopefully that's interesting. If you have any questions, let me know anytime. And I will see you guys in the next one.